I am CHRP Kurasha Abdullahi, currently the Executive Director for the Institute of Human Resource Management. Previously, I have worked in different capacities for NGOs. My last role was with International Rescue Committee, the Regional Office, East Africa, where I supported eight countries on matters of HR at strategic level. Before the CHRP, I have done different courses, both at the university level, undergraduate, and my master's was master's of science, HR. When I did the CHRP courses, it actually impacted my life in a way that these are professional courses that you're undertaking, and it brings you close to your profession as HR. When you're doing matters of strategic HR, at a high level in terms of reward management, performance management, employee relations management. So you go deep into the professionalism of the STEM. And it's not just from a book uh, view, it's from all everyone within the class, the experiences you're sharing and all that. Then in terms of the, the leadership and the governance course that we did, it prepares you for a high level position within the HR sphere. So the CHRP course as a professional course has really impacted my career and it changed my perspective about HR and made me see things differently in terms of professionalism in this field of HR. So that is how I even got to the role of executive director because one of the requirements was you should be a CHRP and I cannot um, regret the decision I made in taking, undertaking the course, even though I had Masters of HR. The Institute of Human Resource Management is the professional body that regulates the HR practitioners in Kenya. So one of the reasons why we encourage them to do CHRP is purely it increases your level of professionalism and it opens you wider to keep up with the emerging trends. Even though the current syllabus is from 2016, you will realize that it's actually updated. Like when you're doing counseling, coaching and counseling, one of the units you cover is the emerging issues in counseling. So you, you keep up to date and then you are able to support because remember you are a HR professional supporting a whole organization, maybe say managing 4,000 or even 20 uh, staff. So they rely on you, on your professionalism and the advisories you give on matters of HR. And CHRP prepares you for that. And we encourage anyone who is a HR professional to take CHRP depending on which level you've reached there are exemptions you get and you take advantage of that and right now with the validation of the syllabus through KMQA then there a lot of value adds because that is the syllabus that as HR professionals we participated through the public participation a lot of professionals within the sphere of HR have looked at it so it's very rich so if you're not taking your exams in June I encourage that you make time for everyone to do the same because it will reach a point whereby the same way you cannot practice law unless you've done you've gone through KSL and done the exams then you cannot uh, practice law the same thing with the CPAK when you see an advert and it's asking for CPAK this level then you automatically know that you've been locked out we are working towards that direction of ensuring that CHRP is anchored through a legal framework that anyone who is interested in the field of HR undertakes it. So why wait when you can do it right now? So when IHRM, as you rightly put, it has come to place in 1986. It only came into act in 2012 as a corporate body which HRM Tep is also under it. Some of the founders which we should actually be grateful, it's because of them that we have this professionalism in this field. They wanted to see what can they do to ensure that we're not just talking about a professional body, but one that is regulated well, 
one that has an examination body so that you have a separation of role that if you are the institute then you have the examination body doing it and it played a vital role when they were pushing for the act they had anchored the hrm pep into the act and uh, now the responsibility of hrm pep is not only to develop the syllabus but also accredit institutions to ensure that chrp which now benefits the hr professionals where ihrm regulates at undertaking exams it's close to them through uh, ensuring that there are as many institutions as possible that are accredited so some of the contributions was hrm pep was a baby of ihrm until now the structures the secretariat of hrm pep were put in place it was being managed under ihrm and uh, if there is one thing the institute is very proud of is how far hrm pep has gone releasing recently their 10th examination and having examined and certified more than 3000 hr professionals that is a long long thing to achieve and actually something that we should be proud of as hr professionals so apart from ensuring that the hr hr and pep body exists ihrm ensured that there is complete secretariat independent which does their affairs as like any other examination body to ensure that we have that credibility and the integrity of the exams they offer and also the syllabus that is actually something that should be applauded the fact that now we are not only focusing on the the certification we have the diploma and the certificates to be examined by hrnp for the longest time we had the higher diploma as a professional course which is examined by net right now with hrnp having their own curriculums targeting certificates and diploma that puts us in a position where by now as professionals we are not only in control of content in terms of syllabus but we have hrs from entry levels examined by the hrnp so it is so again it was long overdue it's a direction that we should have taken long time ago but it's not too late uh, mine is just to encourage anyone who wanted to take hr to now take advantage of this given that we're starting from entry level all the way to the certification through chrp you know when you are a hr professional you're dealing with people matters and uh, you're always working on how you can improve people's lives whether it's through policy formulations whether you're managing performance whether you're managing compensation and most recently we are working on uh, what we call the employee wellness which will be taken seriously we've left that that space of personnel management when now you are a hr professional actually you're always looking at what can you do to better the environment and make sure that it's enabling for everyone who is working with you it's no longer about just putting uh, pay slips in an envelope or finding out who has clocked in and who has not clocked uh, uh, out it's about allowing people to work from anywhere and ensuring that they are productive and for you as a child professional and especially for me the exciting bit is coming up with those policy frameworks ensuring that everything anything that's emerging within this field of hr is anchored somewhere and as an institute ours is to rally and ensure that we always coming up with policy statements and encourage institutions and organizations to adopt the same again i mentioned it's about people sometimes as exciting as it may seem to many people the emotions which are involved the some tough decisions you have to make sometimes in regards to people and uh, people have different thinking capacity how i want to be dealt with is not how another employee wants to be dealt with so always bringing yourself to that level and being cautious of who I, am i dealing with at this point you know you have 
to bring yourself to the level of understanding of that employee. Maybe how you will address someone who is in a leadership role or a management role of someone at entry level is not the same. So trying to balance the same is very, that can be very challenging. And when there are changes, because managing change is also very difficult. So people are used to doing things one way, trying to ask them now, this is how things will work moving forward. Getting that buy-in, convincing them, having those even ambassadors for change, it's not easy. But at the end of the day is that as long as you're very clear and you know where your vision is going and you're very strategic with what you're trying to put across, then that I would say it's a positive challenge. It's all about how you handle. And I always tell HR professionals that we should not forget about our mental well-being. Yeah, because remember we're dealing with people. Mm. It comes with emotions. And with those emotions, even as we manage our own emotions, we should see and learn how to deal with the emotions of others. So this requires a high level of emotional intelligence. Just for yourself, taking care of yourself, your mental well-being, and ensuring that you protect the employee on the other hand. Yes. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, IHRM and HRMT were formed by the same act as a, a state uh, corporate body. And the reason why that was done is to ensure that there is professionalism in this field of HR. We're looking at a situation whereby yes, it's been almost in July, we're looking at 10 years since the act came into force. Five years from now, we should be at that space where we're all comfortable that we are no longer looking at uh, trying to sell HR and PEP and CHRP, that it just becomes a norm for everyone that for me to practice HR, I must do CHRP and we will get there. And professionalization of this uh, profession, HR, is critical. I will give you an example. If you go to our courts, employee relations, most of the time employers lose because HR have not followed their due diligence. Now, if we look those critically, as IHRM, on some of our mandates, apart from regulating, is building competency. And through that building competency is what we do, the continuous professional development, whereby we ensure our members are in touch with emerging issues and we train them accordingly to build their competence and even look at the quality of the HRs uh, we have. So by doing that gradually, I think in the coming years, HR will be at that space whereby it's mandatory for anyone. Actually, we even have HR for non-HR. Anyone who is managing people there should be a certain syllabus that they undergo through to manage people. And those reduces some of these employee relations that we have to deal with. So I would say five years from now, IHRM together with HRMPEF will have ensured at least close to 20,000 HR professionals are certified. HR professionals. Yes, it's been 10 years, we did just 3,000, but moving forward, it will just become automatic because if all these are anchored in different policies and frameworks, then as HR professionals, we need to understand that change is constant and it's high time that we accepted CHRP through HR and is here to stay and we should make all efforts for all of us to take advantage. And even as we do that, HRMPEP and IHRM will partner to ensure that those who are on the remote ends of our country, and I will use Namanga, Turkana, Marsabit, have access to the syllabus through private candidates, which actually IHRM, HRMPEP also has the online examinations. But some of these places, maybe the institutions which administer the exams are not there, or even the learning. So we should promote private candidates. If others are able to do it, then we should be able to do it as professional body. Accredit as many institutions as possible, so that 
I see HRP is available in all universities, all colleges who meet the criteria that we've set to provide these examinations. So HRM paper, as it is, it's doing well, just like any other uh, professional body that is examining a different uh, professionals. Uh, I mentioned before that we need to go beyond just focusing on classroom administration of the syllabus. We should expand and we should actually be deliberate. By now, in the next one year, we should be focusing on how can we come up with policies that allow private candidates. Of course, there will be a rank. I don't expect the diploma and certificates to be taken as private candidates. But for the CHRP, we should be deliberate about it. Because remember, if we're going to tell people that for you to apply for this job, or even for you to practice HR, you must be a CHRP, then we have to give them as many opportunities as possible. Uh, I know it's a new thing. It's uh, the other professionals are 50 years ahead of us, but for HR and PEP, the speed at which it's moving, which I said it should be applauded, it's a speed to the right direction. And those challenges, I'm sure with time, will overcome and people will accept. It's all about now winning and getting those buy-ins on why CHRP and why it has to be taken through HR and PEP. First of all, everything moves at a certain pace. Depending on where you're starting your career on, you must have a plan. You must be clear on what do I want to do. Remember HR, we, there is a HR generalist and you can do different bits of HR, whether you want to focus on employee relations, whether you want to focus on just HR audit, or whether you want to focus on compensation or even at a strategic level, the executive. So you must have a strategy and plan as a young person. Have a mentor. That is very important. Follow the right accounts in Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. Get as much information as possible to help you thrive in your career. You don't just sit somewhere, come in as a HR assistant. The minute you walk in into that organization, you should be planning with your supervisor on your succession planning. Where does your interest lie? You know, ask for more work. Try to be coached and mentored by those who are above you in terms of this profession and those who have uh, had ex more experience than you, whether it's within the organization you're working at or even outside. At IHRM right now, one of the things that we want to focus on in the coming months is come up with a mentorship program and mentor the young HR professionals so that you know that HR is not just about paper pushing and filing. It's more to it. Start writing right now. I mean, we have, we have young people who are very vibrant in social media. And again, who said we all need to be employed? Look at CHRP, one of the courses you do is entrepreneurship and consultancy. So why start? Why don't you start when you're young and have that entrepreneurial mind and see what can you do at a young age? You should be a thought leader, depending on your age. It doesn't matter. You should be the person who is sought after to give the opinions on matters in charge. Follow what's going on on the employee relations court. What are some of the things you can learn from there that you can correct? How can you contribute to the HR profession? The gaps you have seen, even when you walk into your organization, there are some things you will see. So don't hold back. I would say that you must be very strategic, deliberate about your growth, and the rest shall fall into place.